I looked up what that's called the analytics. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I looked up the analytics. My city is my first. You know, they my St. Top. Louis. But New York is my second city. And then when it said like the percentages of the male and female, it straight was like seventy percent female and thirty percent female. I'm not surprised about that. The, my friend put my guy friend DJ Money put me on to your Girl, record. They fucked me months ago. He said, this the shit, I'm telling you, this the shit. I'm they, like, they really? I me. never heard of sexy rap. What? Then I went and did the research. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Well, I got some straight songs. Like people don't be knowing. I got all songs. I've been been doing this shit. They just don't know. Alright, so this is take two because I just recorded this whole shit and my microphone wasn't on. So I'm gonna do this shit again. What's up, y'all? I did not want to make this video. As some of you guys know, I don't want to be covering current events. I don't give a shit about celebrity news. I don't give a shit about the latest episode of Fresh and Fit or the latest scandal to come out of Twitter. However, the reality of social media and especially content creation, which I will touch on, is that you have to be relevant because the algorithm, AKA people's attention, rewards what is relevant, not necessarily what is good. As you know, Fresh and Fit had some random 24 year old dude who's famous for saying dumb shit and supporting Trump and supporting white supremacy. And everybody's fascinated by this kid for whatever reason. And they had him on and during the broadcast, a lot of things were discussed. He gave a lot of his quote unquote insight on life and politics and history. And at one point in the interview, the his fellow interviewees, which are, you know, fresh and fits intellectual guests and the hosts as well, encouraged him to say the N word. And now everybody is talking about it and everybody is amazed by how these black women encouraged this white supremacist to say the N-word. One of them is even seen kissing him on the cheek. And the reality is we missed a very vital part of this clown show. The platform was created by and is currently run by men who happen to be black. I think Fresh is of Caribbean descent. Fit is of East African descent, but they're black. You listen to them long enough, you realize that they're only black by skin tone, but they do not resonate from an identity standpoint with blackness. They are men first, and they prioritize the musings of manhood, and in this case, the manosphere, over integrity and over progress. And that's why having some random 24-year-old kid who's famous for being famous is good business from their perspective. Because there's not that additional filter of how does this help my people? And now we're in an uproar because he was given permission to say the N-word and he said it. But did you see the thumbs up from the producer in the back? Did you see the encouragement from Fresh, the encouragement from Fit, along with the encouragement from some of the female guests? I think the metaphor here is that our women's unproductive nonsense only thrives when we are complicit. Fresh and Fit talk about how some of their female guests who are problematic, the IG models, the OnlyFans models, they come on their platform and then the next day they have 50,000 new followers on social media, on OnlyFans. They have cash apps. And we wonder why we see more of them. Well, because we fund them. We fund them through our trick behavior. But more importantly than anything, we fund these women with our attention. We fund Nick Fuentes with our attention. We fund Fresh and Fit with our attention. And what we say to the next generation is that it's better to be controversial than to be accurate. If you ask a man if he was a woman for a day, what he would do, the answer is give all my homeboys some pussy. No, I'm serious. That'd be, that'd be <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. They have said that. Wow. <laughs> so in their mind, right, they project, right, they create the female for the male fantasy, right? You know the saying, if it bleeds, it leads. It's better to be a contrarian as opposed to an intellectual. It's better to be entertaining than to have substance. And just like this lady said, if men were women for a day, the first thing they would do is give all their homeboys some pussy. Anybody who's been a man for more than two seconds knows that that's rubbish. However, it's gonna get clicks, it's gonna get views. So guess what we're gonna see more of? Rubbish. 
We're going to see more Pastor P's from Fresh and Fit. We're going to see more Fresh and Fits. We're going to see more Charleston Whites. And at least in Charleston White's case, according to him, he is a shock jock to be able to funnel some of those resources to the actual work that he's doing. But my question to us is, why do we have such an appetite for shock? Why do we have such an appetite for bullshit? And then we enjoy complaining about the bullshit that we incentivize. Oh, just pearly things this. Oh, fresh and fit that. And then a million videos come out about it. And now the Instagram algorithm, the Twitter algorithm, the YouTube algorithm says, oh, people care about just pearly things. We need to push just pearly thing. We need to push Nick Fuentes. We need to push fresh and fit. That's how it works, guys. So the reality is, instead of us spending so much time complaining about how black women are this and black women are that and black women encourage and support white supremacy, we should consider some of the ways that we create the environment, literally in Fresh and Fit's case, for them to do so. Think about some of the ways that we encourage them to do so, so we can have another thing to complain about. Because we care more about the rush of being right than progress. So sometimes we'd rather set somebody else up to be wrong just so we can sit in the position of being right, despite what the consequences and what the fallout might be. And this has been my biggest struggle with content creation. It's damn near impossible to maintain integrity if you don't have independence. If you're beholden to an employer, you can't do whatever you want on the job. In this case, if you're beholden to an algorithm that encourages you to feed it based on people's requests and what their attention would like them to see, despite the fact that you might not want to do that, you got to kind of tap dance, which is why I didn't want to make this video. I decided to make it, however, because I think there's a larger picture that we might be able to look at. And there's a lesson, there's a larger lesson here for us. A few months ago, I was caught up in (laughs) my many beefs But this one was over the non-FBA and FBA situation. The young lady in the video who was the main encourager of him saying the N-word, the young lady on the thumbnail who's kissing him on the cheek, she's apparently of Haitian descent. And one of the critiques that come from our FBA brothers and sisters is that non-FBAs like myself would rather stand with the oppressor than stand with blackness. And the reality is it's true. I've been trying to make the case that it's true partly because as a Nigerian, for instance, because of what colonialism did to us, we deprioritize history. We prioritize STEM. That's why you see so many Nigerian doctors and lawyers and the whole nine. But when you have conversations with them, their critical thinking skills as far as like their abstract thinking might not necessarily be there. Because that's not what our parents encourage. That's not what our society encourages. It encourages us to be quote unquote successful. It doesn't encourage us to see the big picture. It encourages us to have a good family and be secure and make a bunch of money. But the idea of community is a facade. The idea of community is coming together for parties and weddings and opulence and throwing money and looking good and as a unit. But as far as how do we progress things, Most Nigerians, if I'm being honest, aren't having those conversations because we don't even trust ourselves. And that's why I tell my African-American brothers and sisters that the concept of blackness started here. The concept of blackness was a response to the concept of whiteness. Nigerians don't barely think of themselves as Nigerians. They think of themselves as Igbo, Yoruba, Hausa. And I'm sure it's consistent with other African countries. So when you roll all that up, and then you're coming to a new country as an immigrant, you lack a deep nuanced understanding of your own history, you definitely don't gain a deeper nuanced understanding of black American history because it's also not even taught in the schools. And all you experience is the vestiges and the trauma projection of what African Americans have been through in this country. Yes, you're gonna grow up not liking African Americans because you you already don't see them as you, you see them as an other. And a lot of our experiences are African booty scratcher and all the insults that we get. Now, when you are able to put it in context, it's different to process it. But again, lacking all that context, that's why you see people like her with a superficial at best understanding of the social political consequences of the things that she's doing and the ways that we interact 
with white society. And although I think she should get a bit of grace, the reality is Africans, Caribbeans, black people in the UK, it is time y'all really sit down and understand what we're up against. This shit is not sweet. We are slap boxing while white people are in a death match because literally whiteness is a global minority. When we hear white supremacists say things like the replication of, uh, of white babies is key to this, they're being honest because they're afraid of their annihilation. And while we are so preoccupied with leading with love and showing them the error in their ways, white supremacy as a construct was created and it maintains itself for the survival of whiteness. There was a documentary I was watching that featured Jared Taylor. Jared Taylor founded an organization called the American Renaissance. He looks like a math teacher, but his rhetoric is amongst the most dangerous in the country. And he said, the upward mobility of any subgroup of people is a direct threat to ours. Again, whiteness is fighting for its survival. So they're wrong in the sense that they are immoral and they're willing to do whatever it takes to that end. And we've seen that throughout history. But I think it's time we shift our perspective from, we just need to show them the error of their ways to, okay, how do we respond accordingly? And love driving out hate is not gonna work. Killing them with kindness is not gonna work. We need to organize ourselves and refuse to continue to be reliant on their institutions because their institutions are founded and sustain themselves based on our exploitation. So educate yourself, brothers and sisters, as opposed to perpetuating this xenophobic us and them dynamic that keeps us so divided that we can't even consolidate our focus to the real enemy. When you learn about the Berlin Conference, when European powers organized themselves, not because they liked each other, but they realized that the way that we're currently exploiting Africa is unsustainable because now we're fighting amongst ourselves for who can, you know, who can exploit the most of Africa. But now nah, instead, let's divvy it up and figure out, okay, France, you take this. Germany, you take that. The British Empire, you take this. And as black folks, that's how we need to start moving. Because although we are inherently spiritual and feelings-based people, our strength is also our weakness. White folks are fighting for their life. I don't understand for the life of me why we are so curious about white supremacists. Now, the hottest commodity on YouTube is Nick Fuentes, a 24-year-old kid who's famous for being famous. He's famous for being bombastic. He's famous for saying things that people wish they could say, but they're not going to say. Because again, we have such an appetite <laughs> for dissent. And it's not about accuracy. It's not about how productive your rhetoric is. It's about shock jocking. The internet is a big Jerry Springer, bad girls club show. And the funny thing is white supremacists are not curious about black people. In their minds, they have us figured out. We're at the bottom of the social hierarchy when it comes to intelligence. We have amongst the most unproductive communities. They have trivialized our existence, but we give them the honor of being fascinated by their descent. I think one of the things we have to talk about when it comes to blackness is, I think a deep part of us assumes that we're the world's parents. And because of that, we tend to extend grace to our enemies and people who seek our exploitation and our eradication. And what we don't realize is that's what keeps them going. Every click, every search of Nick Fuentes puts money in Nick Fuentes's pocket. And that's part of the reason I didn't want to do this video, because for me, fresh and fit is irrelevant. For me, Nick Fuentes is irrelevant. Whether they drop dead tomorrow, it wouldn't change anything in the world. Fresh and Fit talk about helping men become better. Yeah, they're helping men, but they're not helping the black community because they don't even identify with it. But I think the main thing here, I've said it before, women are naturally chaotic. I think we need to accept that as men. And we need to resign ourselves to the role of being the order to their chaos, as opposed to exploiting or encouraging, whether overtly or covertly, their chaos, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Because whether you talk about the Essence Awards, whether you talk about the BET Awards, BET is now bought by Tyler Perry, a black man. Whether you talk about every IG model or social media personality that you just love to hate, 
You're helping them with your attention. And the reality is, if we plan on moving this thing forward, black men, we need black women. We need their help. Black women, we need black men. You need our help. There is no doing this without us. There is no us and them. There's only an us. And I just, I just imagine what we can create when we're in harmony again with one another.